Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminar. This is Session 1 The Basics, continuing with Part 3, Sizing Objects, Adding Levels and Constraining Objects. OK, to jump back to the Revit model where we were before, we've got four walls in a 3D axonometric view. OK, um, I want to quickly show you about temporary dimensions. So I'm going to double click on level 0 to look at this object in a 2D environment. If I click on an object I get a temporary dimension on an adjacent object so it's looking at relationships between objects. I can change that relationship by typing there, sending it up to 15. If I hit that one I get that relationship. So the sizes don't matter really. I'm just going to pull this down into I'm trying to keep everything within these elevation markers because we're going to use them um, later on. Uh, talking of elevation markers, uh, we can add various views, continuing the theme of views, um, by adding an elevation marker of our own if we want to, um, and also section markers. If I add my own elevation marker, and place it there. Now good practice if I select that you can see it's got a depth which can be dragged and I can also change that um, as to where the front end and the back end of that elevation will be um, best practice is by selecting it um, is give it give it a proper name um, down in the properties box view name elevation 1a I could change that to something a bit more um, descriptive like south 2 because I've already got a south 1 okay that elevation now shows in my project browser as south 2 so you can add elevations similarly from the view tab you can add sections and click once click twice and it's going in that direction that's the depth now obviously if I change that depth there if I go to that section I'm only going to see the two walls if I change the depth again to encase the end wall I can double click on the head to quickly go to it I now see that end wall so you can see that there is um, some quite useful features within the sections okay um, right, let's go into one of our elevations. Um, let's actually get rid of the thing, two things we've just done. Uh, select it, hit delete. View one will be deleted. OK. Same with that section. Hit delete. View south of the two will be located. OK, notice in the project browser that they are deleted as well. Let's just stick to our regular elevations. And uh, let's work in our south elevation for now. So you can either double click on the project browser or I actually prefer to just double click on the head of the marker. Now, our marker lines are actually on top of the building, which isn't as clear as we would like. Selecting these can be quite tricky. When you're zoomed in, if I click now, I will get the wall, even though I was trying to click on the marker head itself. One way around that is by using the tab key by hovering over an object and tabbing through the particular objects that are underneath the key uh, uh, the uh, pointer head. Uh, that takes a bit of getting getting used to. Uh, another way when you're using these is actually just to zoom out a little bit and uh, it becomes easily. So one way or another select that marker so I find zooming out is actually quite easy so select that notice this is quite difficult to demonstrate but there is a very small circle to the right of the head of that marker if I click hold and drag I can pull those markers away notice they're locked together and a little blue dash line running between them same applies click hold and drag to the other end this tick box turns on heads, markers if I want them 
Okay, so we've got a level one. Let's add another level. Um, from the architecture tab, you can only do this in elevation, adding new levels. We're going to add a, a, a new floor level and we're going to change its name to roof. Um, okay, to start with, let's do it up and above. So on the architecture tab, on the far hand side within the datum section, you can see a level marker. Click on that and I'll show you a way of inputting. Now I want to do this above, but so I'm going to be neat and I'm going to find that blue dash line on the left hand side which will lock it to those other marker heads and again on the right hand side find that blue dash line and click again. Okay, escape twice gets me out of the level marker. Now Okay, we can do various things to this level marker. I want to change its name and we will change its height eventually. Um, to if we select the level marker itself, there's three ways of changing its name. You can either change it in the properties, change it to, excuse me, change it to roof. Would you like to rename corresponding views? Yes, please. Notice it's now changed in the project and it's also changed on my project browser. I could have changed it here by calling it level 2 again. Yes. And again, see the changes are made there, there and in the project browser. Or I can change it in the project browser. So you see these things are all interconnected. Rename and I do want to call it roof. So let's have it as a roof. Okay, so we'll leave this up and above. It doesn't matter the height, but way up and above because I want to have a quite a dramatic change to show you what I mean um, in height of wall. Let's jump to the 3D view again. This time, use your quick access toolbar just to get used to using that. I find it a lot quicker. Um, I'm not going to save for now. You don't need to yet yourselves. Okay, so we're in the 3D view, zoom out, sweep select all the walls, it's probably the quickest for now to do that but remember the other selection methods shown in the earlier video. Um, the important thing is all the walls are the same wall type and they are all now saying they are unconstrained at the top and they are 8 meters high. We're going to constrain them to our new roof height so they should jump up in height so they are glued to that floor height now. Now this is very useful for future editability and revisions. Um, you never know when you might need to change these datum points. So the more objects that you can associate closely with the datum points, the easier it is to edit and do quick changes in the future. When you're setting up a project, the more you can do to make your future life easy and make your project editable the better because jobs are never finished and things always need revising okay so that's it for part three uh, please find us in part four thank you very much